Hi Grade Fives, welcome back to your Natural Science lesson for today. Hope you're well, hope you have had a good day so far and you are hopefully starting to get that weekend feeling. Um, although, not quite yet, you have to pay attention to my lesson first. Um, we are going to continue today with our study of energy and change, but before we do, let's remind ourselves of what we learned last lesson. So last lesson we looked at energy chains and the idea that energy is transferred from one form into another as it moves along that chain. And I asked you as a little bit of an extension activity to go around your house and see if you can find five devices and write down the energy chains that that device goes, that sorry, that make that device work. So for example, a hairdryer, you could take the hairdryer, it is kinetic energy, movement energy that is needed to flick the switch to turn the hairdryer on. That movement energy, kinetic energy, is then changed into electrical energy as the current flows through the hairdryer, and that is then changed into heat and sound energy as I dry my hair. So that's what we did in last lesson. Um, that's what we looked at, energy chains, and we are going to move forward today to look at fuels. But before we do, let's take a quick second to remind ourselves of the email address, grade5 at worksheetcloud.com. If you have any questions or anything you would like me to know, please pop it uh, in an email to that address there. So we are going to start our um, lesson by looking over our learning objectives and the vocabulary that we are going to need to know. So our learning objective for today is to understand what a fossil, fossil fuel is. Fossil? Fossil, sorry, get my tongue in my mouth. Understand what a fossil fuel is and to know the advantages and disadvantages of using fossil fuels. The vocabulary we need to use, um, renewable, non-renewable, fossil fuels, and the greenhouse effect. And we are going to be learning a little bit about all of those things today. Okay, so let's get started. So let's start with a very good opening question. What are fossil fuels? Well, hopefully you know from grade four that a fuel is a store of energy that we use by either burning it or, or doing something to it to release the energy that is stored. And, and hopefully from yesterday's lesson, you'll be able to know and tell me that stored energy is called, that's right, chemical energy. Okay, so fossil fuels or any fuel is a store of chemical energy. But what are fossil fuels? Okay, well, fossil fuels are fuels such as coal, petrol, gas, oil and diesel. Here I've got some pictures, there's some coal, this shows a gas hob burning. This is an oil rig in the ocean uh, pulling up oil from underground and there's obviously someone with a petrol pump in their hand just to give you a good idea of what each of those things looks like. So now I wonder if any of you can group those things together with what they have in common and it actually has to do with how they are created. So where do fossil fuels come from and how are they formed? Around, and this is a really rough guess, three million years ago, plants died in swamps and fell on top of each other, forming layers of dead plants. Over millions of years, sand, mud and silt were moved about by water. And you will learn a little bit more about that when we do the rock cycle but that's moved around by water and wind and dumped on top of the dead plants. Okay, so that's a movement of erosion and transportation of all that silt and dirt and then lands on top of the plants. And those layers of mud and sand over a very long period of time are squished together and hardened and the plants underneath are turned into coal. And we say that those plants have been fossilized. Now that's really, really a very basic ex um, explanation as to what a fossil fuel is. The fossilized remains of dead living things such as plants and animals that have been over millions and millions of years compressed and hardened by compaction of dirt and sand and silt on top of them. Now what's important for you to remember is the law of 
energy conservation. Now we did that in our last lesson when we looked at those energy chains. We talked about the fact that energy is neither created nor destroyed. It is just changed from one form to another. And that is the case with these fossil fuels. So a living plant had energy, chemical energy stored within it. Okay. And when we did food chains, when we looked at life and living, we spoke about how that that makes them producers because they were producing their energy from the sun. So they have got that energy stored in them. And when they are, um, when they die and they're being buried and they create that coal, that energy is not destroyed. It's still there. It is just now transformed into a different, different chemical store in the coal. So millions of years later, along comes humans and we dig up the coal and realize that when we burn it, it produces a lovely form of energy for us. Now, before this, we humans would have used wood, which is equally as uh, good at giving off heat, but it doesn't burn for long. It's not as good a store of energy. And of course, please remember here I'm referring to coal, but this could be oil or petrol or anything of those, any fossil fuel. Now, a fantastic advantage of this is obviously the fact that it will not lose that chemical energy that is stored within it. A piece of coal, if I hold it in my hand now and I give it to my great, 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 great granddaughter, it will still have the same amount of energy stored within it as it did when I was holding it originally. Um, so in terms of um, storing the energy, it is brilliant to know that that is always going to conserve and hold on to the chemical energy that is within it. But there are problems. There are always advantages and disadvantages to everything in life. And there are some big disadvantages to using fossil fuels. So let's have a good look at those. So the problem is that over the years, we are using fossil fuels faster than they can be replaced, okay? The human population is growing. There's far more people in the world, far more demand for fossil fuels, for the coal, for the oil, for the gas, for the petrol, um, to keep us warm, to make our cars go. The trouble is it takes millions of years for those fossil fuels to be uh, made. So we are using them quicker than they can be naturally replaced. And remember, you might remember from our work on material and matter a few weeks ago, I spoke about natural, uh, naturally occurring materials and said that coal is one of those things. We don't make it. It's not a human man-made object. It comes from our earth and therefore we can't speed up the process. Um, and, and I've got down here in the last sentence, eventually the fuels we are currently using will run out. That is why we call them non-renewable. So that is the word there that you needed to put down from our vocabulary list earlier. Fossil fuels are non-renewable. And there is even a bigger problem and one that concerns many people I know, which is the fact that burning fossil fuels to release that chemical energy stored gives off gases that are poisonous to our environment. Gases such as carbon, uh, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and sulfur dioxide. Now you don't need to worry about the long scientific names of those gases, but what you do need to know is they contribute to something called the greenhouse effect. And I'm going to now take the time to explain to you what that is. So many scientists believe that the burning of the fossil fuels and the releasing of those gases into our environment are causing our earth to get hotter. Okay, and the way they explain this is by using the analogy of a greenhouse. Now, I don't know if many of you have seen a greenhouse. I haven't seen many around in Cape Town the years I've been here, but they're very, very common in the UK because obviously it's a cold climate. So a greenhouse is built of glass and basically creates a nice, warm, humid environment for the plants inside to grow in. Light goes into the greenhouse through the glass and is absorbed by the plants. The plants and anything else inside the greenhouse warms up and give off their own heat energy, but that heat cannot escape back through the glass. So 
the inside of the greenhouse is nice and warm. Okay, another way to think of it, perhaps, which is a nice way for you to, um, which I'm sure you've all experienced is, have you ever got inside a car that has been parked in the sun after a few hours? And you get in and it's like, oh, it's so hot inside the car because the sun has been shining through the car windows into the car, warming up the inside of the car, but that heat energy is trapped. It cannot get back out through glass. Light energy can come through glass, but heat energy cannot. And then you get in the car and you say, oh, mum, please open the windows. And you sit there with the doors open for a little while and the air conditioning perhaps going before you get going. And that is what's happening to our planet. So the sun is shining down onto the planet and going in through our atmosphere. But the heat that our Earth generates cannot escape because those dangerous gases are creating almost like a blanket around our atmosphere. So the sun goes in and you'll see here the arrow of the heat coming up, but it hits that blanket of gas and bounces back down and up again and down again and up again and down again. And that is making our earth get hotter and hotter. And that is contributing to a process that scientists call global warming. And here I have a picture for you. This is a picture taken, an aerial picture from space taken in 1979 of the Antarctic ice, the polar ice caps. And then here is the same area taken in 2007 at the same time of year. And you can see how much of that ice has shrunk and scientists believe it is a lot to do with the greenhouse effect. The overall temperature of our earth is rising, the overall temperature of the seawater is rising, and that ice is not managing to stay frozen. Well, in turn, that will also then mean that the ocean levels rise, and it can also cause crazy things to happen to our earth's weather systems, and many of you may be watching the news and hearing about hurricanes or big storms. And the news reporters are talking to scientists who attribute that to the fact of global warming caused by the greenhouse effect. Now, I know all of this is pretty scary to take in. What I want, don't want you to do is now turn around to your parents and say, Mum, Dad, I'm never getting in the car again because it uses petrol, which is a fossil fuel, and they are bad for the environment. I'm afraid our modern society doesn't work like that. We wouldn't be able to live if we didn't use electricity or burn some form of fossil fuels. But what is important is for you to be aware and know of the advantages and the disadvantages of using fossil fuels, and also to be aware of the alternative fuels that are now coming out that are called renewable fuels. We'll learn about those in next week's lesson. So let's just do a quick summary of the problems of the disadvantages of using fossil fuels. Remember, we are using them quicker than they can be naturally replaced by the environment because they take millions of years to form. And that is why we call them non-renewable. And the second disadvantage is that burning them gives off some poisonous gases into the atmosphere. And those gases scientists attribute to causing the greenhouse effect. And that is where the gases trap heat inside the Earth's environment, inside the Earth's atmosphere, causing our Earth to get hotter and hotter. Now, you may wish to pause your video at this point and use that um, screen as a little summary notes in your book. But do remember, it is also equally important to remember that fossil fuels have their place and they also have their advantages. And as I said earlier, one huge advantage of fossil fuels are that they retain their chemical energy. They don't lose it. So a piece of coal dug up 15, 20, 100 years ago is still going to have the same amount of chemical energy stored within it today and so on and so forth. That's why they are so valuable um, and such a useful commodity to humans. So let's see how much you can remember from what we've covered in today's lesson. I would like to see if you can answer these four questions. What are fossil fuels? Name me three fossil fuels. 
Why is it important that we don't become too dependent on fossil fuels? And what is the alternative? What do we call alternatives to fossil fuels? So pause your video and see how you can answer those three questions, oh, those four questions, sorry. Okay, let's see how you got on. What are fossil fuels? Well, fossil fuels are fuels formed over millions of years from dead plants and animals. And remember, I told you earlier that no energy is neither created nor destroyed. So the energy that was within those living creatures and living um, plants when they were fossilized was retained and is stored as chemical energy. Name three forms of fossil fuels. Well, you could have had lots, but I, got, I went for coal, oil and gas. Petrol is a fossil fuel, but petrol is actually refined oil. So if you put petrol well done, it still counts, but it's, yeah, there you go. Okay, why is it important that we don't become too dependent on fossil fuels? Well, you could have had one of two answers. I have put this one. They will run out at some point. That is why we call them non-renewable. Good. So that is definite. And then also because scientists believe they are contributing to global warming through something we call the greenhouse effect. And lastly, what is the alternative? Well, if they are non-renewable, the alternative is renewable energy. Um, and we are going to learn about renewable energy in our next lesson together. We're going to look at renewable energy sources and their advantages and their disadvantages. Remember, there are advantages and disadvantages to everything in life. Okay, so thank you so much for attending today's lesson. I hope you had a uh, interesting one and you learned some new information about fossil fuels or even just refreshed your understanding of fossil fuels. Please do take the time to do the activity that I've posted online for you um, following this lesson and I look forward to seeing you next week after you've had a great weekend. See you then grade fives, bye!